Hi, Matt. How Hello. are you? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine, thanks. Are you enjoying Glasgow? Always. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's one of our favorite places to play. Bronx has been coming here for a long time, and uh, you know, you know, some people don't really uh, some people don't really like it. It's a little dreary, you know, something mm -hmm. like that. But it's like it's it's always been really cool to us, and it's a, it's a a place we love coming to on tour. So I, I'm very very excited to be here. Awesome. For those who don't really know much about the Bronx, can you give your role in the band and how the band formed? Yeah, uh, I sing in the band. Uh, the band got together around 2002, put our first record out around 2003. Uh, we're a band from LA. We play uh, aggressive and uh, abrasive punk music. Um, and. Uh, you know that that's pretty much it we got three records out we got a mariachi band that we got now that we had two records out now with that and uh we're we're busy dudes what influenced you to start a band or be a musician um music was the, the really the only thing that's ever kind of got a hold of me and, and never really let go I, I was as a young kid i was never really you know, I was kind of into sports and kind of into other things, but music was the only thing that really kind of uh, grabbed grabbed my spirit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So um, it's it's really the only thing I've ever wanted to do. And I, you know, to a certain extent, you know, I, I can't exactly speak for the other guys, but I know them well <laughs> enough to, you know, pretty much it's the same thing for everybody. It's just kind of a uh, a calling from a higher power. You know, it just feels like. That you're not really going to be happy unless you're doing, you know, what you want to do and, and what you love to do, and, and that's creating music and and you know playing music live and recording music and um, you know kind of being surrounded by uh, by you know art and 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 just kind of inspiration. Mm -hmm. So um, that's kind of really the only thing that's ever turned me on. So that's uh, that's why I'm here. And you're doing it well. Thank you. <laughs> The last album you released as The Bronx was in 2008. Is there a follow-up in the process? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're writing it right now. You know, we're, we're super busy with the new Mariachi record, so it's going to take a little bit of time, but it's, it's, it's in the works and it's going to be, uh, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be the best Bronx record we've ever written, definitely. Awesome. Can't wait. Rock Sound Magazine named the second Bronx album as the album of the year in 2006. Out of the three releases, which would be your favorite, and which album of this year would you think was your favorite? Um, that's a hard one. That's a <laughs> that's a really hard one. I I love I love all the records. You know, I I love all the Bronx records. Two was a really a really cool a really cool time. Um, you know, we spent so long on that record, mm -hmm. and it you know it was absolutely ridiculous how much time we spent on it. <laughs> And it completely unnecessary, but we were having so much fun. And you know, each record is like, you know, it's like the first record was just kind of a us getting together and the backstory of all of our lives that led up to that point, the kind of explosion of, of all the frustration of, of trying to become an artist and a musician and to survive. That all kind of bled out on the first record. And, you know, the second record was like, okay, you know let's see you know what we can actually do you know like now we have a little confidence under our belt and <laughs> and let's see how creative we can get now it's kind of the probably the, the start of the creative kind of uh, you know do the opposite do the opposite sort of thing that the Bronx follows <clears throat> and the third record was you know us trying to get our, our own kind of feet underneath us and be able to survive as a band without a label, without, a, you know, management, without all that stuff and just kind of doing everything on our own. So there's stories behind all the records and I love them all. You know, I, I the first one was probably, would probably be my favorite mm -hmm. um, just because of everything that led up to it. You know, there was just so much that had gone on in, in my life before that record started and came to and and it was just, you know, like I said earlier, it was very much just kind of like a diary of, of every single thing that went wrong up until that point where the one thing finally went right, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, I look back on that and, and, and I, you know, I, I love it. You know, I, I love, uh, I love how, how far we've come since then and I, I love how that was kind of the start of everything, so.
I'd have to go with the first one. Awesome. Probably my favourite as well. Cool. <laughs> In Knife Man, there's the line, everything is digital, the formula's all falling apart. Do you agree with downloading or do you hope that people would go out and buy like the proper copy of the CD? Um, you know, that's, that's not really talking about that. It's just mm -hmm. more of the idea of, you, you know, I, like, I, I, tr like tradition just kind of being over overlooked and, mm -hmm. and, and where things came from being overlooked and ignored. Um, I really don't have a problem with people downloading music. I, I don't care. I do it myself. Um, but I am a huge, um, a huge vinyl guy. You know, I'm a big mm -hmm. record collector. And to an extent, that's kind of what that's about. You know, it's just kind of, it's about understanding shortcuts. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. I just, it, it just kind of pisses me off when people are entitled to um, think they're entitled to instant gratification and uh, to get everything right now when there's such a, you know, people have waited and worked so hard to get to where they're at, you know, it's like you just can't ignore that and there has to be kind of a, a proper way of looking at things and, re and respecting things. Yeah. Awesome. After this short tour in Redden and Leeds Festival, what is planned for the band next? Um, we got a uh, mariachi tour um, with the Foo Fighters in the States. That's for really? two months. Yeah, it's going to be crazy. And, uh, and then after that, we're coming back here. Uh, just the mariachi group's coming back to do a tour of, uh, of UK and Europe. So I think we'll come back here. We're actually playing Edinburgh, which is really cool. We never really mm. get to play Edinburgh. No, not a lot of bands. Yeah, to yeah, and I love it. I love it there, you know, but we've always, we always play Glasgow, so it'll be nice for coming back sometime between November and December to do that. And then um, we'll probably break for uh, Christmas and, and finish the Bronx record and, and then, you know, go out Good and do things. it all over again. <laughs> yeah. At Reading and Leeds, what bands are you hoping to see? Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing The Strokes. You know, I, I love that band. I love mm -hmm. Pulp. I'm, I'm looking forward to see them. Um, Let's see, uh, our friends, uh, my friend Fredo, our friend Fredo, who plays percussion on some of the El Bronx stuff, he's playing with this band called Funeral Party from L.A. Mm. They're, they're pretty awesome. I'm looking forward to seeing them. Um, there, there's a lot of stuff, you know, we got a couple friends on the stage and Street Dogs and, and uh, Boss Tones and all that stuff, so it, it, should be, it, it should be cool, you know. It's, Ray and Leeds is always... You know, I feel very fortunate to be able to say that we've played it, you know, mm -hmm. a couple times. You know, it's such a big, big marker on any musician's kind of list. <laughs> you know, you always, you know, I remember the first time we played it, it was such a huge deal, you know, and it still is. And it's, it's always fun to be a part of something that, that's that enormous and that has that much history. And we look forward to playing it. You know, it's it's, it's going to be an awesome. I can't believe it's actually here. It's fucking tomorrow. It's, yeah. you know <laughs> it's coming I mean? round really quick. Like yeah, here. yeah. Um, Matt, you appeared <laughs> on a Biffy Clyro song. What's your views on the British music scene? Um, I I love the British music scene. I mean, I'm not the most up to date on mm -hmm. it. Um, but I, you know, and the, the, the Biffy dudes, I, I love those guys. You know, we, we did a tour with them. Uh, and they're pretty local to here too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. They all, they, yeah, I was a little disappointed. They usually leave us a bottle of, uh, of some good whiskey whenever we come through, but they, uh. they didn't leave it for us this time. So oh, I wish I knew I live in a pub. What? Oh, I wish I knew I live in a pub. Oh, I could have brought you some man. whiskey. <laughs> Uh, no, but it's, you know, you know, what's really cool about the things over here is a lot of things break here first, you know, and a lot of American bands come over here and, and they start getting big first. Um, there's just more, I think there's more of an excitement about music over here, more of an excitement about new music, mm. especially, yeah. you know, people really, really want to, to find out what's going on and not just in their area, you know, it's like. Uh, you know, music, music in the UK, it's like they like to look, see what's going on in the US, what's going on over here, what's going on over here. And they just kind of, you know, they're eager. They're eager to, to be in tune with what's happening. And, and I appreciate that, you know, because it's hard. It's like, you know, when you're surrounded by music constantly, you know, sometimes you just go home and you just shut it all off, mm -hmm. you know. But there's a lot of good music out there right now. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of awesome things happening around every corner. And, you know, 
to keep your interest peaked is a hard yeah. thing to do, you know, and, and the UK has been doing that for a long time. And the good thing with the likes of Redden and Leeds, a lot of people get to check out bands that they yeah. wouldn't normally go and see. Yeah, absolutely. Tonight you're performing as the Bronx Alter Ego Mariachi El Bronx. How did the band decide doing a mariachi band? Um, we got we got asked to do like an acoustic TV show thing, a Bronx did, mm -hmm. and um, it, it, like we always kind of want the Bronx to be what the Bronx is. You know, it's experimental, it's loud, it's it's chaotic, it's aggressive, it's abrasive. We don't really want to change that. You know, yeah. we don't want to take a Bronx song and and you know turn into uh, you know like a, a folky. You know how like all those punk bands do that now. They all just start you know pick up an acoustic guitar and. Not that there's anything wrong with that. It's just not our style. Mm. We wanted to try to do something a little more creative. And so we decided to try to do one of our songs in a, a mariachi style. And uh, it just it just kind of took off from there. It was so much fun. You know, it was, it was, it was so rad just kind of exploring a, a whole other side of music, a whole other genre. You know, different rhythms and, and, and different structures and, and, you know, different ideas vocally and lyrically and melodically um it was just really refreshing mm. it was really cool and and you know we became super inspired to make our own record and uh and we did and and uh we just finished another one and i think it's coming out uh september 12th over here awesome yeah, yeah. any last words for oh no sorry <laughs> if the fans could take away one message from either of your song either your songs a live show what do you hope it would be um, I, I don't know, Just get involved, you know, don't be lazy, there's so much that you can do with your life, you know, like, we have songs literally about, you know, everything from A to Z, but it's like, the, the, the moral of the story is that, you know, you, you, you really do only have one life, and if you want to do something creative with it, it, you know, you have to go out and take it. You have to work your ass off and you have to work hard and you have to love what you do. And I think there's a lot of people that give up. You know, they just give up because they don't really, they don't really want to put in the time or they don't really think it's possible. You know, they get scared or they get insecure. And, you know, anything's possible and you really can do whatever you want. You just gotta, you can't be afraid to work hard and, you know, to get involved and, and to, uh, you know, to be yourself. So, you know, that's something I think the world would be a better place if, if more people, uh, you know, just really try to do something different. Definitely something to live by. <laughs> Any last words for those watching? Um, thank you. You know, I appreciate it. Appreciate the interview. Thanks for checking out our band. Thanks for coming to the shows. Um, you know, hopefully we'll see you in Edinburgh. And, uh, you know, thanks Glasgow for always being uh, a special home for us. Appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you very much. Cool.